Hi YouTube. It's the farmer here. I am uh, attempting to do my first pipe community video. And uh, maybe not so much of a review, but just let you know my my personal thoughts on um, a pipe that I have here and a um, maybe a vintage tin. Hard for me to say the word vintage for something that was was produced uh, years after I graduated from high school. But this is a um, about a 20 year old tin, uh, according to the date on the bottom, the stamp date of um, Ashton's Black Parrot. Uh, I have not read or listened to or watched any reviews of this tobacco on YouTube. I, I don't know if they exist or not. I haven't researched it. I just wanted to um, wanted to give you my own feeling about it and uh, bef before I was influenced by anybody else's recommendations for or against. Um, this is the pipe that I'll be trying this in. I haven't, uh, this is an unsmoked pipe that I purchased from the Danish pipe shop. It is a Paul Winslow high grade uh, pot with the, uh, with the silver here. And uh, it's a nice pipe, small pipe. A little smaller than what I, I typically um, I typically smoke, but not by much. Um, I've had it a, a couple months, just have not um, have not fired it up yet. The uh, the way this this blast is cut into the pipe is not not a hundred percent sure what the what the um, what the purpose of the undulation in the lines are, but um, it's got a nice feel in the hand. I have to imagine that has something to do with it. I'm left-handed, so when I grasp it like that, it's the way it's cut here on the side. It fits real nice right here in that pocket. Um, a little bit about myself. Like I said, this is my first uh, my first pipe review, pipe tobacco review, if you want to call it that video. Uh, on YouTube, I am um, I am not uh, influenced that heavily by by the reviews that are that are just pipe tobacco reviews. I, I like to watch the reviews where um, somebody gets on there and maybe tells a little story or uh, has a little bit of fellowship uh, via the web, more than just a strict um, tobacco or pipe review. Uh, Thabo, welcome from my stoop. Uh, I do watch everything he puts on, and um, I look forward to his to his um, recollections and, and thoughts on things, um, and his very small uh, commentary on the on the smoking end of of what he's up to. So that's my goal. Um, I have not been uh, in the high grade, if you want to call it that, the high grade pipe and tobacco world for very long. However, I have been in the pipe um, hobby, if you want to call it that, or habit, I guess. I, I'm not sure, but I have smoked a pipe for um, many years. I started uh, when I was in the military, and I went to the uh, pubs in England. Not really much of a, never was really much of a cigarette kind of person, but I did enjoy uh, smokeless tobacco, usually um, a leaf chewing tobacco, and uh, wasn't readily available except for on the PX or BXs over there, so um, went to cigars and pipes, and uh, I enjoyed it but never pursued it as much of a collector by any means, mainly a drugstore, uh, half and half, or Carter Hall, and yellow bowl, Doc Graybo pipes, uh, basket pipes, maybe at a cigar shop, 20, 30 bucks was about the most I'd ever spend. And had quite a few good pipes, uh, probably, at least I felt that way. Um, never really appreciated uh, 
the who's, what's, or why's as far as the, the hobby went or the the manufacturers or the carvers or whatever you wanted to call it or the or the manufacturers of the tobacco, but I enjoyed the, the relaxation that it offered. And, um, you know, by my username, I, I am uh, in the agricultural world, so a lot of time by yourself and it's kind of filled some voids. And that's that's basically my... Uh, my beginnings in this in this hobby in this lifestyle and then about a year and a half ago um, just by happenstance decided to buy a, a little nicer pipe at a at a tobacco shop and um, brought it home noticed it felt different it smoked different uh, bought a tin of I think fourth generation Peter Stokeby tobacco uh, Thought it was ridiculous at the time to pay fifteen dollars or whatever it was for that tin, but took it home and um, a little different experience, a little better experience, a little more refined, I guess you could say, and uh, started digging a little deeper as far as um, what all was out there. I was really surprised by the presence on the um, on the web on on video sites like YouTube, um, on the forums, uh, as far as what was out there for education and fellowship and uh, community. And uh, after doing some research and, and spending some time on those forums and watching those videos, I liked what I saw and it was a, um, it was a nice new start to an old hobby. So started going in the direction of maybe a little higher grade um, pipes and tobaccos. Um, really, nothing that that um, is is too off the charts for me. You know, two three hundred dollars is probably the the most I'd want to spend. Um, you know, I so I thought, and then moved up into a, a couple higher grade pieces, but. I still don't consider myself a collector. I don't consider myself um, uh, anything other than somebody who's appreciative of the craftsmanship and the uh, the art that goes into these pieces, and I seem to be able to enjoy it a little more. So, uh, with all that being said, let's open up this uh, let's open up this tin of black parrot and see what we have here. I've never smoked uh, an Ashton product. Um, I stick mainly to, this is my tobacco of choice, it's three nuns, um, English or uh, Orientals is, is what I'm, I'm mainly uh, seem to gravitate to, but um, I attended my first pipe tobacco, my first pipe show was in Columbus this year, 2016, and uh, I acquired... Um, actually won one of the, a pipe in a raffle there and the pipe wasn't my style at the time so um, in our pipe club one of the gentlemen there um, traded me the pipe for some Ashton tins that are that are all made in the mid to late 90s um, all still sealed and it's all my my kind of Virginia uh, English with some oriental and a little bit of Perique in it and the, the the um, wording on the tins, just the story about it, it appealed to me, so I traded him some tobacco for the pipe, and we're going to find out if uh, that trade was worth it here in a minute. So let's crack this tin open and see what we have. So this is a, this is a flake. Flake tobacco in here. Doesn't seem overly dried out. I don't see any visual uh, indications of any any uh, mold. That's the flake. It's a it's a dry flake. It's got a really um, Virginia smell to it. And it's, this is dry. This tobacco is definitely dry. So um, I don't feel that it's, that it's too dry to try to rub it out and give it a shot here. Um, 
you know, inside the tin, I see a little bit of, of um, looks like a little bit of, um, I don't know if it's corrosion is the word, but a little bit of marking on the on the inside. They, these are the, these tins have the um, I can see they have the food grade lining inside, like some of the new um, canned goods that they have out there. So that lining is stained a little bit. Um, if I pull the lining back, you know, it looks like the like the tin itself was in pretty good shape. I don't see any any area on here where it may have may have ever seen uh, really bad things. It's probably seen some better days. But um, it's not like I traded a $300 pipe for it either, so it's worth a shot, and it wouldn't be the first time I've rehydrated some tobacco. But once again, like I said, it's got a really nice smell to it. I like the note, the tin note. Um, people talk about that ketchupy smell. I guess if I had to describe it, it'd be something like that. So uh, I'm going to get some here and, and rub it out, and we'll, we'll spark it up here and see what, uh, see what we think. Be right back.